and welcome to FCC TV. I'm your host Casey Taylor and this week we will be talking to a myriad of guests. I have Audrey Pendleton Chow with the Fitchburg Cultural Council, Ashla and Paul Journey of the Blacksmith Festival. I have Michael Knight and John Stella with New Players Theatre Guild and a special interview with Veronica Ramirez Martel. So stay tuned. To start off, we have a recap of our grantee reception and community input meeting. <laughs> Cultural Council's 2020 grantee reception and public input meeting. Thank you to the Fitchburg Art Museum, where we are, for joining us and hosting us. Thank you so much to Jesse, who's here. Next, I want to thank uh, the local Cultural Council for their volunteer work during the past year. It's been a lot, hasn't it, with the COVID situation? So I'd like to first recognize all our Cultural Council members. So please stand when you hear your names, okay? And we'll let everyone stand and then we'll applaud, okay? Eileen Berger. I hope you all come. I, there'd, be, there'd be a better time, I think, to introduce one another and um, talk about what you do. Joe Bowen, our officio. Matt Brunn, I never know how to say your name, Matt. Derek Cruz, Jesse Olson. Please, we invite you. Please join us. Audrey Pendleton Chow. I just want to add, we have a Facebook group called Fitchburg Cultural Council Group. Part of the intention for that was for people to write on their ideas that they have. Maybe they don't have the skills to do those these um, amazing events, but maybe there are people on there that do have those skills and can collaborate. So it's a really great place. Um, to build that art community. Yeah. Miriam Ruiz, me, Tamar Russell Brown, Claudia Stevens, Casey Taylor, and Leona Wetzel. Thank you all for your work. Good evening. As we gather to celebrate the gods of Pittsburgh, I want to give a special thanks to Tamar. Thank you for having me. This is beautiful. It's a gorgeous, sunny day. I'm glad we have the tarp though because it is very hot. My name is Veronica. This is a beautiful example of, of what happens when the community gets together, you know, and puts this beautiful celebration of all the grantees that are here or people that might be involved in some way or maybe you are thinking about being a grantee as well. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a review of what uh, is down the pipeline. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you so much for being here. This grand cycle we're hoping is going to be back at how it was before. So very soon on September 1st, applications open for this upcoming grant cycle. Um, they will be open until October 15th. Um, but the U.S. Census figures are now being publicly revealed. And I think it's fantastic that the census documented our diversity. We know we're I know that there's this happening. Consider being also a member yourself. 
yourself. And that way you can be the voice for your community that you know that there are so many assets and so many artists and maybe they're not getting out there. You can be that person that connects. So just a plug. Good afternoon from the Fitchburg Art Museum. We are here with a on-the-go edition of FCC TV. My name is Veronica Ramirez Martel, and this is Casey Taylor, who you might recognize. Delightful, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we are here at the Fitchburg Art Museum today because we're doing our community input meeting and our grantee reception. But Veronica is here to talk to us about the Mass Cultural Council and what they do for uh, our city as well as our individual council. Um, who are you in relation to the Massachusetts Council? What do you do there? What's your official job title? Yeah, so my official job title is I'm a program officer within the communities team. And within my role as community program officer, I support the Berkshires North Center, which is where Fitchburg is, and the Plymouth County. So I am the liaison to the Cultural Council here in Fitchburg, and I support through anything is that technical support. Right now we're moving to a new grant management system. That's, you know, encouragement. I am here and very happy to see this grantee reception um, and just connecting whatever needs to happen. So I, I like to think of my role at the agency as a connector. Excellent, that's awesome. What are some things you love about working with the Massachusetts Cultural Council? Being here, so the pandemic has caused, you know, a lot of shutdowns and we're right now in that process of seeing what can happen safely. So usually being able to be out in these areas and meeting people and having those organic conversations because I come with some knowledge as a program officer, you come with some knowledge as a council member, as a local uh, resident of the area, and how can we get together and connect things that otherwise haven't happened? And that's one of my favorite things. That sounds very exciting. Um, in light of the continuing COVID-19 pandemic, how do you feel the upcoming grant season will be affected? We'll, we'll hopefully go back to the regular schedule. Our grant season will be opening on September 1st, as usual, all applications will be open until October 15th. So we're trying to get back on the schedule that we've had in the past. This past two years have been much of an outlier, but ideally we're able to keep some semblance of the usual rhythm. Excellent, that's gonna be very exciting. So what is some advice you would give to someone who is applying for an MCC grant for the very first time this season? I wish I could apply. I can apply. Fun fact, even council members can apply. You just have to go through the conflict of interest um, procedures. But I would say to, you know, put yourself out there. Really think of what you want to put out in your community and what your community could do better with. And be genuine and... Talk to your council, you know, very often in grant or funding situations, there's more of a, oh, you know, how can I put the best foot forward? Like, what can I do best? And I think that being open and, and talking to your council can, can create great things. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, uh, maybe we're a little bit scary at first, but none of us <laughs> fight. We're super friendly and we want to talk to all of you. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Um, Last but not least, so uh, what do you think the Massachusetts Cultural Council as well as your individual uh, sections that you're in charge of, as well as Fitchburg's Cultural Council, could be doing to more effectively support the gambit of our diverse residents? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, how do, how do we get to this point? Yes. Because well, I know so many people want it. Yeah, yes, exactly. I mean, I personally believe that making and creativity and just like anything that you put your heart into is art. You know, anything that you, in, in Spanish we say esmero, anything that you, you know, really try for is art. And I think that the beauty of having local residents be the ones that are having the system and, you know, say, hey, I know that there's, I don't know, this local community center here, I should reach out and say, hey, do you have any events you want to do? That sort of very everyday connection. Just think of how in your everyday 
you can involve the arts, you know? You can find people that you haven't met before. You can see events that are maybe happening and you think, oh, if it had some council funding, funding, or if we connected with this other performer that we know, it's that, it's, it's out there. All the beauty and all the artistry and all the talent and all the hard work is out there. It's about connecting it. It is, it truly is. Well, yeah. thank you so much for talking to us today. Yeah. It was an absolute pleasure to be able to interview you. Thank you for having me. It's that time of the year again. Fitchburg Cultural Council is accepting grant applications for cultural programs that benefit the Fitchburg community. Got an incredible idea that needs funding? We can help. These programs must be in the arts, science, or humanities. It must have public benefit. And finally, be sure it meets our council priorities and guidelines determined from our grantee reception and community input events on Friday, August 13th at the Fitchburg Art Museum. So, if you're looking for operating support, need funding for a ticket subsidy program, field trip, artist residence, public art, fellowship, community events, programs, or more, apply at mass-culture.org slash Fitchburg. Applications open September 1st, and the deadline is October 15th at 11.59 p.m. Check our Facebook and website for grant training dates or email us at fitchburg.mcc at gmail.com if you need assistance. Welcome back to FCC TV. My name is Casey Taylor, and right now we are here with John Stella and Michael Knight. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And you're both directing performances with the New Players Theatre Guild, is that correct? That's mm -hmm. correct. Excellent. John Stella, why don't you tell us about your production first? So Baby is a musical that I will be directing. Um, it's the first two weekends in December. Um, it's the story about three couples living in a college town, very much like Fitchburg. Uh, the first couple is in their early 20s and they've just moved in together. The second couple is in their mid-30s and they've been trying to have a baby for a very long time. And the final couple is in their mid-40s and they've just sent their last daughter off to college. And they all realize at the same time they find out that they're all having a baby. Oh my gosh. And um, it's the story really not of the baby, it's the story of how the pregnancy impacts the relationships of these couples. Beautiful, excellent. Um, so what does the typical schedule for performances with New Players Theatre Guild look like? So we will be rehearsing uh, three nights a week. Um, it in also involves, because it's musical, it involves uh, rehearsing music as well as lines and blocking and um, we are having a rehearsal schedule of eight weeks uh, and we start with auditions the first full week of October and then we go right into the rehearsal schedule and um, I'm happy to say that we have a great great uh, accompanist and uh, musical director. Excellent. Yeah, Chris Layton is wonderful. That's very exciting. And how can the public be involved with this program? Well, first of all, you can come and try out first week in October. Um, we also will have, uh, we'll need help for stage, people moving stage. We'll need help for people finding props, managing props, uh, people being ushers if they want to be ushers um, for the show. That's also great. Excellent. And what steps have you and your partners at the New Players Theatre Guild taken to make sure that this show will be both uh, accessible to the general public in, or I guess not both, but accessible to the general public in a way that promotes equity? So we, the, the, um, the auditions are open to all. That's the first thing. And um, we obviously are looking for people who can sing and move and, and act as well. Um, but we are, are an inclusive organization. 
So we pride ourselves on bringing members of the community into the organization to um, make sure that we're representative of the organization of the community as well. Excellent, that's great. Um, and as far as uh, viewing the performance goes in December when it's ready, your dates, uh, let, me, let me know if these are wrong, um, but I have December 3rd through the 5th and December 10th through the 12th? Correct. Excellent. The 3rd and the 4th will be at 7.30, the 5th will be at 2 o'clock, and then the 10th and the 11th are also going to be at 7.30, and the 12th will be at 2 o'clock. So Beautiful. we have Sunday matinees and then sat Friday and Saturday evening shows but not too late. All right, that's, <laughs> no, that's excellent. And are, are your tickets 20? $20. I think those are my prices as well. Yeah. All right, so now we'll be moving on to Michael Knight, uh, whose production is coming up relatively soon. It's coming up, I, I think we're less than a month. J J what month is it? September 24th, <laughs> uh, 24, 25, 26, first, second, third. 7.30 Friday and Saturday and Sunday at two. Yep. Are you doing October dates as well? October 3rd is the last performance, Sunday, October 3rd. Excellent, excellent. Yep. And what can you tell us about the performance that you will be directing? Steel Magnolias is from the 80s, uh, and it is a very funny, but he didn't know, Robert Harling did not know he was writing a comedy. He just is a funny guy. So he, th he wrote about, I don't want to give too much away. You guys might know what Steel Magnolias is about. He wrote about his own heartache. Let me put it like that. And uh, so we went to rehearsal. He went to a performance. And the first line got laughs. And he's like, this, this is funny. And then every other line got good laughs. And he's like, I, 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 I'm not certain. And then at the end of the show, everyone's crying. So he, uh, he knocked it out of the park. Wild. Mm. What a roller coaster of emotions. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and how can the general public become involved with this performance? I assume auditions have already happened oh, and you've yeah, been practicing. Yeah. We're, uh, we're cast, a great cast of actresses. Um, unfortunately, no actors, sorry. So, uh, next time, they can go for next the baby. Time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, but if people would like to help out, we need ushers. Uh, I'm always asking somebody to run lights. So, if you want to get involved in theater, Absolutely, they'll take you in and teach you how to run lights or run sound. Those are great. In fact, uh, you can almost like do it professionally because we got Fitchburg State's got a great theater program. We've got a couple of good local Fitchburg theaters, so we have. I've seen a lot of people go professional from Fitchburg. It's great. Nice, crazy. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if the New Players Theater Guild participates in ticket subsidy programs of any kind? I don't. That's a All great right. thing to find out. I would love to figure Can that you, out. What is, uh, what is that exactly? So um, a ticket subsidy program would say be you can get tickets for free from the local library, Great. or you can get tickets for a discounted price if you're, uh, say, an EBT card holder, mm -hmm. or you get assistance on any number of things. Not that I'm aware of, but it sounds like a good thing to look into. Yeah, absolutely, I highly encourage it. Mm -hmm. Where is the New Players Theater Guild? Where is oh all this going boy, to take place? You boy, you got me there. Do you we know are located <laughs> at 15 Rollstone Street. Well done. Um, it is a <laughs> lovely former church. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great old building, and um, the acoustics in the building are just great. Oh, yeah. Nice. And that is in beautiful downtown Fitchburg. Beautiful is that downtown mm -hmm. Fitchburg. Mm -hmm. That is right. Excellent. And if I can also make a plug just for COVID safety, mm -hmm. um, the audiences at this point, we are requiring that the audiences are going to be masked because we want to make sure that when people come to the theater, they can enjoy the productions, both productions, and feel safe about being there. Um, our cast members are vaccinated. They are. And I didn't require vaccinations in the uh, in the audition. They just came that way. Mm -hmm. All right, that's so great. So it's going to be. Uh, I think. I, I know Steel Magnolias is going to be a great production. Mm -hmm. I know Baby's going to be a great production, and we want to make sure that people feel safe when they, when they come in. Absolutely, mm -hmm. so important.
very important. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I very much appreciate it. Again, John and Michael. Thank you for thank having you. us. New Players Theater Guild. Be sure to catch their performances in September and December, respectively. And we'll be right back. Thank you. I'm Tamar from the Fitchburg Cultural Council. We're inviting you to Fitchburg Open Studios. It's a full weekend, folks. Show up September 25th and 26th downtown. We have 35 artists and galleries participating. Big news, big news, and we're super excited. You can go to FitchburgOpenStudios.com to get the map and come downtown and look around at what will be open that weekend. We want to really thank, first of all, the Abijah Wyman House and New View Communities. They both donated money to this, so thank them if you see them. Really important. Thank you both so much for your donation. Saturday, 9 to 5. Sunday, 12 to 5. September 25th and 26th. Fitchburg Open Studios. See you there. Welcome back to FCC TV. I'm your host, Casey Taylor, and we're here now with Ashla and Paul Journey of the 18th Annual Blacksmith Art and Renaissance Festival. Welcome, thank you for being here. Thank you, our pleasure, yeah. our pleasure. Excellent. So to get started, just to dive right in, what can you tell me about the Blacksmith uh, Art and Renaissance Festival? It's also called the Forge, and I believe, is that correct? Well, I'll just, just tell you that blacksmithy is one of the oldest art in uh, uh, the form. Uh, first, it became very uh, was a very util utilitarian items that people made, like nails and hammers and skillets and stuff. But over the years, uh, from the fences and all, guns were very then. A lot of kings and um, government money went into uh, this making forges and big, uh, but eventually it died down and uh, got revived by artist blacksmiths that love to make things. And iron is a beautiful material because firstly it's not expensive, secondly you can heat it and melt uh, work with it when it's very hot, red hot, into any plastic form that you want. It's a beautiful thing that you can sculpture into. It's a long learning process and you have to love it to do it. And we are very fortunate in this area, New England area, we have many blacksmiths who are renowned in the country and they are <coughs> the people that we bring every year, one of them, to uh, demonstrate which is the highlight of our, fun uh, of our festival. And they really show their skill and we also assign them judging of the competition. And I'll just tell you briefly about the competition. In, we hold this competition with uh, substantial cash rewards so that there is incentive for people to work, come and demonstrate and show. And they really do work with fire. It is a hot force that they bring in. It could be gas or charcoal, prefer whichever preference they have. And we have classified people into three categories. The novice division has students or just people who are beginning. And then we have an intermediate division, which mostly people are hobbyists. They have some other profession, but they do it for the fun of doing it. And uh, third is the professional blacksmiths. And uh, a lot of time we have also used these people as judges because they come. But a lot of uh, few of them that I've talked to, they prefer competing than <laughs> judging. <laughs> they really, uh, I think, they enjoy the prize, the challenge, the camaraderie. And uh, also because 
people can meander and look around at them. They just like this uh, audience that there. It's a live people watching because mo it's a very solitary profession. When they're working yes. in their shops, they're all by themselves. And here they have people to things. So um, this festival has evolved over the period and it has picked up quite a uh, following. And uh, word of mouth through uh, our own talk and we are part of the New England Blacksmith Association, so I advertised in them. I'm also a member of New England Blacksmiths uh, Association, and there is a uh, American blacksmith, so called Albana, and I do put in a little ed in that also. Uh, so that's how, how it is. Uh, anything? I hope I explained you quite a lot. Yes, yes, it was brilliant. Thank you. I learned so much just now. Um, what does the daily schedule of events look like during this? festival? Well, uh, we start uh, with uh, around 9, 9.30. Uh, of course, all of us, Paul and my husband, all come early and set up. We assign people their spaces because uh, we have to keep them a little far apart mm. uh, just because they're working with the fire. And so COVID is not an issue. <laughs> so they, uh, uh, they start with the um, everybody has to pre-register, so we already have the list of people that are going to come and compete, so that is uh, required. We do once in a while accept on-site registration, but usually we want that. And so we start with the judges meeting at 9.30, quarter to 10. The judge talks about 15 minutes to each of the competitor, telling them what it is. Then the program for each category is divided into three divisions. So we start, the first period is from 10 to 11, then we have a break for 15 minutes, then 11, 15 to 12, 15, and then uh, <coughs> that was the second. And there, uh, <coughs> there's a intermission lunch time, and that's where the demo takes place. And the third session is for two hours. It starts from 2.15 to, uh, to 4.15. And uh, the projects are pre-assigned, they, which they have to do. We provide them the steel to work with, which is always a rectangular piece of steel or a round two piece, t depending on the project that is going to be done. We post the projects on our website and so they can practice and do them on their own time before coming, whatever they feel like doing. It's just completely unassisted. Everybody has to do their own project there. And also to <coughs> win the prizes, they have to compete all three periods. No, somebody can not just do the first period and oh, uh, wow. do it. Yeah, and, and there is a, literally a bell that we ring to cut down the time that's done. That have to they have to bring it in, and uh, we post. Uh, we constantly keep uh, grading them as the uh, division there, and we post that on a big board. S who won and uh, the first, second, and third prize in everything is all assigned. I uh, that too the prize money is close to four thousand dollars. Oh wow! Uh, and the total of that. There's a second end to this competition, which is that uh, if you look at the F FC uh, program they just printed, that is the trellis uh, that uh, my husband and I had donated some uh, years, just almost at the start of the festival. And the way to we fill it is we ask the uh, competitors if they would like to bring in a pre-done piece, 18 by 18. I've added one more price, so we have first price of $500, second for 250 and uh, third and fourth our consolation price at 125 each. And the, channel, uh, the trellises they submit become, even if those that don't get uh, awards are uh, property of Pitchbrook's Virgin and we 
have them, the Pro Department of Public Works builds them into the panels. And so that's how the trellis is. And recently, the trellis got filled, and that's where Paul came in. He can tell you more about it, what they did. So, so these panels are beautiful. I mean, if you've seen the front of the book, they're just, they're gorgeous. It, the, the whole thing, this is all craftsmen. Is right? this the trellis at Riverfront yeah, Park? Yeah, okay. yeah. So we've expanded it this year. We added two more sections so more panels can go up. Because we were looking, we were only a few spots left. And it is true. We don't want this to end. We wanted to keep going. And we should be talking about 18, but you know, 28 and 38. So mm -hmm. we've increased it to put more panels in it. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Department of Public Works comes and uh, builds them in place for us. And uh, I keep every once in a while getting get a note from somebody saying, oh, we enjoyed those panels yeah. because they are open uh, and accessible year round uh, in the yeah. park. Absolutely, and, and they're uh, beautiful. And we've always based the theme on life around the river. It's a kind of artistic interpretation of it so people can interpret it whichever they way they want. But uh, I, I think that's exciting. I, I, I based it on the quilt idea, and uh, it's been successful, I would say. So we, we were fortunate to have the students at Monty Tech make the, pet, make the, uh, the, the trellis additions for it. So it's just great. It's a great way to add to the, to the festival. So this year Wonderful. we will hold a panel competition too. Ah, that's so exciting. I love seeing the panels whenever I go to Riverfront Park. It's probably one of my favorite parks in Fitchburg, uh, of which there are hundreds. Um, but this just makes Riverfront that much more special. It, it does. And it's it such does. a great like piece of work in total. It's so like whimsical, and and I think it has something that can speak we, to a lot of people. And you know, to talk about that, that's that's kind of like the festival, right? So on on the day of the festival, there's 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 an, there's an air in Fitchburg, right? So you can the forges are going. You can smell it. I mean, you can smell it all the way up on Main Street, right? And people are just getting excited, and the artists are excited. The craftsmen are excited about it, and okay. and I think they all—they're all. They're all uh, Ashla said they're excited about talking about their craft, right? So they love the audience, and, and they interact with people. People ask them questions, uh, and they—they're just so willing to talk about what they do and how they do it. And yeah. it's amazing how some yeah, of them I learn. I think it's a good advertisement for the. Competitors too, especially yeah. the professional one. They bring their business card and they, they get commissions from uh, this. Uh, you know, if somebody needs something, and uh, cool. the uh, and the uh, park. The uh, after that bridge was restored, the entrances these. Uh, archway and the panels so it's uh, and and then just before a week before uh, my husband is big uh, he's a metallurgist and he's one of the founders of this uh, festival so Ashok uh, commissioned an artist in Poland to get s some full-size sculptures so he owns those and uh, Department of Public Work puts them on Main Street for us every you know? year. Yes, I love and those. that uh, dragon has kind of become a mascot of the festival. And they are very kind enough to move it to the park after that one week. And when the sculptures come, people already start telling me, oh, we know festival is coming. <laughs> so yep. there's a big. Because they pop uh, up down Main Street. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then Paul, uh, ROTC has been such a help to us to fill in the details of things getting done, whatever gets done, and then they are, are kind enough to bring in tents or tables and chairs, and uh, and so one of our employees puts in a whole day. She's been doing it for last many years. in uh, Because once when the entries come, they need to be tabbed mm -hmm. and entered into the computer so we know who's winning what. And then we always do a grand total of all the uh, three uh, projects so that there's a, uh, a final award in each category. So uh, we keep, and there's a championship jacket that we give, and we design a t shirt that we give to all competitors for free. And the public uh, can buy them too. Excellent, <laughs> so excellent. They're available for sale. And the, you know, uh, 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 there is no fee that we charge to the competitor or fee to come. Beautiful. And so we have kept it that way. And um, uh, there's always food available to buy. And uh, there are vendors, uh, non-profits. We don't charge them to come and uh, show. So FCC will have its own table there. 
<laughs> so that's, that's so how it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've summed up quite a bit on it. You have. You did. Thank you so uh, much for all of the information, both of you, and for being here today. And that will be, correct me if I'm wrong, September 25th at Riverfront yes. Park? Yes. Beautiful. So make sure to come to Riverfront Park on September 25th. Uh, we'll be waiting for you. It should be a great time. You can smell the forges. You can. Ah, I'm so excited. Yeah, Thank and you. then around at uh, 4.30, quarter to 5, between 5, we have a price distribution. Yes. And a lot of people do not stay there, but it would be nice if more stayed, but at least all the competitors are there because yeah, they want to win the prizes. Yeah, stay and And we go. also give ribbons to them. And uh, usually uh, the mayor and our state senator, he'll be here. And um, so, and I, you know, whoever, uh, sometimes uh, the, the <coughs> so Kushmer was in our office yesterday and yes. he's going to be here to, uh, and he said he'll be there for the price distribution. And Dina Tali also has it on his calendar, I think. Nice. All right. So Ashla, Paul, thank you so much for meeting with me today. I very much appreciate you telling us about the 18th annual Forge in Blacksmith Art and Renaissance Festival in downtown Fitchburg. Thank yeah, you. Uh, we are very, very, very excited this time because it cor corresponds with the open studios too. It does. So that would be uh, good that people can come and then do the studios and come back again. That would be really exciting. Should be a busy weekend. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you much. so much. Thank you. And please come and <laughs> join the yes. festivity. Hey, it's Casey from FCC TV. I'm here to remind you guys that on Friday, September 24th from 5 to 7 p.m., Fitchburg Cultural Council will be hosting the Creatives Meet and Greet, a networking opportunity for local creatives in your area. Now, we are looking for writers, painters, photographers, builders, architects, singers, actors, producers, any sort of creative, uh, professional or hobbyist or uh, what have you. It's, there's no discrimination here. It's networking. It's gonna be a really good time. Again, that is Friday, September 24th from 5 to 7 p.m. on Mill Street. We'll see you there on Mill Street. <laughs> to FCC TV. We're here now with my dear friend, Audrey Pendleton Chow, who is the co-chair of the Fitchburg Cultural Council. Hi, Audrey, how are you today? Hi, Casey, good to see you. It's good to see you. Yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hoping to talk to you about a couple different things. Um, so we have Fitchburg Open Studios, which is happening very soon. Mm -hmm. The grant training sessions, which are coming up in a, in a time. Yeah, yeah, September 15th. Yep, mm -hmm. and the creative meet and greet. Yep. So let's start with Open Studios. What can you tell me about Fitchburg Open Studios? So Fitchburg Open Studios is a um, annual event. Um, it was started by our chair, Tamar Russell Brown um, of the Fitchburg Cultural Council. Um, she's also the owner of Gallery Sitka um, and she works with um, the Boulder Art Gallery and some others um, to put together this free Fitchburg Open Studios tour in which they invited artists to open up their studios to the public. Um, and maybe they'll be selling their art, but it's mostly just to see how see these artists' workspaces, promote them, um, and um, uh, it's just a really cool event that happens for um, the same weekend as the Black Blacksmith Festival, which I know that yes. we just had them on. Um, so it's going to be really exciting. Um, and yeah, so uh, last year the Fitchburg Cultural Council voted to. Um, make that part of their project um, so that they would have more volunteers and more people working on it. Um, so that's that's the Fitchburg Open Studios of what I know. Excellent. <laughs> and it is going to be two days long. It is the weekend of the 25th and the 26th. Um, towns that are included? 
so we, this time we decided to focus mostly on downtown Fitchburg or in town Fitchburg um, and I uh, try to encourage people to pop up um, at our spaces in town. So there are some at Rollstone, at the Fitchburg Art Museum, at um, uh, First Parish Church. Um, we also have some uh, not just fine artists, we also have some record studios, recording studios involved. Um, I know Zen Den and I think maybe Grizz Gang is, yeah, yes. Grizz Gang is um, on there. Um, so that's really cool. Um, yeah, but it's exciting. also like surrounding areas, I believe. Um, some in Gardner. I think involved. I saw Ashby maybe too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and our website will have information uh, up on it about where we can pick up physical brochures. Um, if you're interested in having a yard sign to help promote Fitchburg Open Studios, we can get that information to you via the website. And the full map will be on our website as well. Yeah, and our website is fitchburgopenstudios.com. Beautiful. Excellent. Let's talk about grant training sessions. Those are coming up pretty soon too, right? That's true. Um, so grant season, as we've been talking about, um, starts uh, September 1st. That's when the application's open. You can start your application then, um, and the deadline is October 15th. If you've never done a grant before, um, if you've never applied for a grant before or from uh, the Mass Cultural Council, we have training sessions so that we can help you um, learn uh, how to use the application and fill it out, but it's honestly like a very easy um, application. Uh, it was my first grants that I applied for and <laughs> it was really just like asking kind of basic questions and some things about like you know putting together your budget and you know you just have to get that information and put that in there yep but um, our grant coordinator Eileen will be um, will be leading those sessions and they are Wednesday September 15th and Thursday September 23rd from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Um, at Fitchburg State University um, in Hammond um, in room G11 in the conference room. And we thank Fitchburg um, State University for hosting uh, yes, the space. thank you. Will there be virtual access for these trainings? I believe so. We haven't quite figured that out yet, but if you are interested in attending but um, cannot attend in person, send us an email at fitchburg.mcc at gmail.com um, to uh, let us know that you're interested in it and um, so that we can get you registered and send you the, um, the link once we figure that out. Yes, yes, very exciting. And because grants can be so daunting, regardless of how easy or difficult the grant application might be, I do encourage anyone who is even vaguely interested to come down to these grant training sessions or sign up for the virtual versions, um, if only because it can be informative and show you how, uh, how, yeah, how easy just, the process is. How, I didn't want to say how easy because for some people it may not be. Right. But. No. It's worth learning, I think, yeah. how to be a part of the process and see what people applying for grants go through every year and how you can maybe turn your idea into a community program. Um, and it's all very exciting kind of once you get your teeth into it, I think. So I'm like, everyone needs to do it right now. <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> it's all part of like getting involved with um, municipal committees and seeing what they're doing. And, you know, uh, the public has stakes in uh, what, what the Cultural Council does. And part of that is, well, like, you know, how are the app what's the application process? Is this mm -hmm. accessible to everyone? Is my community like left out of this somehow? Like, Exactly, so it's our job to teach you, the public, how to do this. Um, and if for any reason we're not reaching members of the public who are interested, we would love to know um, so we can work on changing that. Yes. Yes, very excited. So we're gonna switch gears real quick. And now we are going to be talking about the creative meet and greet, which is happening on September 24th. Fourth, I believe. That's correct. So it's the day before Fitchburg Open Studios. We did this because then artists who are part of Open Studios are setting up everything, getting ready for um, the big weekend. Um, they can relax and have kind of like a groundbreaking to Open Studios in a way. But it's 
open to all creatives, not just those who are part of that, um, part of the event. Um, we want to encourage um, everyone to come, uh, you know, creative is such a broad term. Uh, you know, it could be like musicians, actors, um, artists. I'm an escape room owner and I consider, uh, I consider myself creative. Uh, <laughs> I think that counts. It's I that would decoration, say what you, you do know? fits in the creative industry, right? Yeah. yeah. You're so, an experienced curator. Exactly. So we have writers coming to these things, um, photographers, uh, architects sometimes. Yes. Like it's, it's a great way to get to know members of your community who may have interests Mm -hmm. in various things that you do and it's I've seen projects form out of these meetings I've seen organizations form out of these meetings I've seen friendships blossom out of these meetings it can be magical yeah yeah and maybe we can get some foragers from uh, blacksmith festival uh, to also come Ooh. I did mention it to them as on their way out okay um, but yes uh, so the current plan is we still need to finalize some things. Uh, it's still pretty fresh, um, but it is happening um, at Mill Street Stage, um, which I know that a lot of artists, that's probably where they're gonna go and hang out anyways. Um, and we talked to Strong Style Coffee and they will open late for us to be open from 5 to 7 p.m. There's also a food truck festival happening at uh, River Sticks. So we totally encourage like either um, at the beginning or at the end, go get some food from the food truck festival and then come and hang out with us um, on Mill Street. We're working with Reimagine North of Maine um, to make it a fun and exciting event. Um, but it's mostly gonna be pretty chill. Just everyone hang out, networking with um, grant applications being open. Maybe um, you've got an idea, but you're like, what I really need is a forager, but I am not a forager. How am I gonna do that? So. Then where you, am I going to go meet a forger? Yeah, where where am I going to meet a forger? This is a thing. Yeah, I That's mean, obvi one. obviously you could talk to them at the Blacksmith Festival, but they're going to be pretty preoccupied with the competition. So, <laughs> 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 so this is a great time to do that, and it is free and open to the public. Is that correct? Exactly. Beautiful. Yes, so, always busy weekend. Yes. Okay. Very excited. Excellent. Thank you so much for talking to us about that today, Audrey. Audrey Pendleton Chow, co-chair of the council. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Thank you for watching FCC TV with us tonight. My name is Casey Taylor, and we will see you next week.